ground force grave shoring system is a self-contained set of hydraulically operated equipment that can be used to safely support excavation for graves. It is installed from the safest possible place outside the excavation. This demonstration shows the grave being dug by hand. Similar principles apply when using an excavator. The hydraulically operated shoring units can be supplied in either rectangular, as demonstrated in this film, coffin shaped or tapered configurations in various sizes to suit specific requirements. Our demonstration trailer carries a full selection of grave shoring and ancillary equipment supplied by Ground Force for the purpose of providing safe, serviceable equipment for bereavement services. Assembly of the grave shore unit is a straightforward process of connecting the fabricated panel sides to the hydraulic cylinders using a simple pin and clip arrangement. The hydraulic connection on the cylinders should be facing the top after assembly. Also shown being assembled here are the optional telescopic end support posts which are used in conjunction with aluminium sheets to form a closure at the ends of the excavation where there is a risk of loose materials entering. After assembly, a final check is always made to ensure all connecting pins and clips are securely located and fastened, and no other obvious defects are present. It is strongly recommended that the units are regularly serviced by ground force trained personnel, at least on an annual basis, or more frequently in heavy use conditions. The ground force soil box is assembled prior to commencing digging. This consists of a fabricated steel frame and plywood panels to form the base, sides and ends of the box. This product has been specifically designed to neatly and safely store the weight and volume of the excavated material from a typical grave. Once the soil box is assembled it can be covered with an optional tailored waterproof cover until required for backfilling. The digging operation begins with a marking out of the area to be excavated. Care must be taken at this stage to ensure that all unauthorised persons are kept away from the area of work, particularly in the proximity of the excavator if one is being used. The soil box is positioned a suitable distance away and front boards removed to allow easy access for spoil. Front boards are inserted progressively as required. Once the depth of the first shoring unit is achieved, the corners are trimmed to facilitate positioning of the hydraulic unit. It is essential that a competent person is on hand to assess the exact shoring requirements. The hydraulic medium used in the hand pump consists of a mixture of biodegradable shoring fluid and water. Shoring fluid acts as a lubricant for the system and also prevents freezing during winter conditions. It is important, therefore, only to use the shoring fluid supplied by Ground Force. The pump is primed by adding shoring fluid to the reservoir tank and topping up with clean water. A mix ratio of 3 to 1 is recommended for normal working conditions. Details of mix ratios are shown on the label affixed to the pump body. All hydraulic connections in the system are of a quick release type, as shown here, where the delivery hose is being connected to the pump unit. A two-way bridle is now attached using the same style of couplings and this is attached to the delivery hose from the pump. Care must be taken to ensure the connections are made correctly, otherwise fluid will not flow from the pump. Handling slings are now passed through the handles located at each end of the shoring unit. The whole assembly with a two-way hose bridle connected between the unit and the pump is now lowered to sit on the base of the dig. As the hand pump is operated, the cylinders expand and will eventually pressurise the system between the walls of the grave. Pressure is registered on the pump gauge. Normal working pressure is in the region of 1000 psi or until a firm resistance is felt at the pump handle and no further expansion of the hydraulic cylinder can be achieved. Care must be taken not to exceed this pressure or damage to the units may occur. Where multiples of units are being installed, excavation is carried out, working within the supported area until the next level is reached. The first unit is now contracted and allowed to slide down the grave, first by passing the handling slings through the handles on the units, then by reconnecting the delivery hose to the pump unit and opening the release valve to allow hydraulic fluid to flow back into the pump reservoir. 
By pulling on one side of the sling, the cylinders are retracted just sufficiently to allow the unit to be lowered into the new position at the base of the dig. It is then pumped out as before. Another unit is now introduced and will sit on top of the lower unit and will be pumped out as before. At this point in the excavation, aluminium trench sheeting may be installed to prevent the ingress of soil through the open end of the dig. These are placed behind the end support posts which are designed to avoid any damage from pressure on the hydraulic cylinders. These sheets can be overlapped as required to form a complete end closure. As excavation continues, additional front boards are progressively inserted into the box to contain the soil. In this demonstration we have shown three grey shoring units to fully support the excavation, the third unit being installed in a similar manner to the first two units. If required, a lockable cover can be fitted. This consists of two fabricated aluminium cross members which are secured by driving steel pegs into the ground at an angle. If the ground is too hard to drive the pegs, the cross members can be secured directly to the handles on the top shoring unit by ratchet straps or chains. The polypropylene cover is now inserted under the two fixed lugs on one side of the cross members, lowered into position and the hinge lugs on the opposite sides are swung over and padlocked. Prior to the burial ceremony, the lockable cover is removed and purpose-made panels of artificial turf are placed around the area. Extraction of the units is basically a reversal of the installation process, with the excavated material being progressively reinstated and compacted as required. Finally, turf is replaced and the area is made good and tidied. Once the backfill process has been completed, the shoring units, pump, hoses, slings and all other ancillaries must be inspected for any signs of damage. Any items giving cause for concern should be reported immediately to the relevant person in authority. The units can be disassembled and flat packed as required. Please observe the following points while using this equipment. A competent person must assess the correct shoring requirements before any work commences and carry out risk assessments as necessary. Use appropriate PPE whilst digging. Inform anyone in the vicinity of the excavation that work is proceeding. Inspect all components at the start of every working period. Ensure that all retaining pins are in place and are securely fixed. Use only the handling points while lifting or moving units. If machine digging, appoint a competent banksman. Keep everyone away from the excavator slewing zone. Use only shoring fluid supplied by ground force and use clean water to dilute. Closely inspect all materials for any sign of damage after each use and report any items of concern to the relevant person. Service units regularly. Do not allow anyone to enter an unsupported excavation. Do not use excessive force when installing units. Do not attempt to overpressure the hydraulic cylinders. Do not use any form of shoring fluid other than that supplied by ground force. Do not leave equipment and unsupported graves unattended at any time.